Good morning, students. We have started the living organisms and their surroundings chapter. In that, we have completed different types of habitats, both terrestrial and aquatic. In today's class, we will discuss about different characters of all living organisms. Okay. There are many things in the surroundings or in the habitat of living organisms. If you take a forest, from a forest you can find many things like trees, creepers, small and big animals, birds, snakes, insects, rocks, soil, water, air, dry leaves, dead animals, mushrooms, mosses, etc. So we discussed so many things. Out of all these things, if we carefully observe, some are living things and some are non-living things. Okay. How can we distinguish between living and non-living things? We are simply telling there are certain living things and certain non-living things. How can we distinguish? Living things have some common characteristics than compared to non-living things. These common characteristics make the living things very different from the non-living things. What are those common characteristics? The common characteristics are which are found both in plants and animals as well as in other living things. All living things need food. All living things show growth. All living things respire. Okay. All living things respond to stimuli. All living things excrete. And all living things reproduce their own kind. All living things move. And after certain time, all living things die. Individually, living things die. All at time, they may not die. But individually, every living thing, it will die after some time. Okay. So, these are the common characteristics that are found in both plants and animals in other living organisms also. So you have to make this list, right? Let us discuss in detail about all these characteristics. The details of the characteristics of living things. First, living things need food. See, if you take living things or the organisms, they need energy to grow and for their other life process. And this energy comes from food. Food gives energy to organisms for their growth and life processes. There are different types of living things, plants and animals. Plants make their own food through the process of photosynthesis. So, they do not worry about the food. They don't need money, etc. From natural resources, they make their own food. Whereas animals, they depend on plants and other animals for their food. Next, second property or characteristic. Living things show or exhibit growth. What does it mean by growing, increasing in the body size? A very living thing, it takes birth in the form of young one in small size. The young ones of animals grow into adults. Growth is different in different animals based on their type. Different, there are different animals. Based on the type of animal, some animals grow very big from their small size. Some animals grow very small level from their uh, what's it, young period. And some animals may grow to a moderate size. So there are different types of animals based on their type, they grow different in sizes. Plants also grow 
The growth of plants also is different in different plants based on their type. We have land, herbs, shrubs, trees, etc. Trees, they grow very big. Herbs and shrubs in the same time, they grow small in size. Based on their type, they grow differently. Here comes the third characteristics, living things, respire. The body finally obtains energy from the food that the living thing takes. But how the energy comes? By which process energy comes? Energy comes from the food through the process of respiration. So respiration is necessary for all living organisms. If respiration is not carried out, energy will not come. So, what happens in respiration? Exchange of gases is a part of the respiration. Exchange of gases means in respiration, oxygen is taken by the body and CO2 or carbon dioxide is given out by the body. This process is known as exchange of gases. So it is a part of the respiration. In humans, the air moves from outside to inside of the body by inhalation. Inhalation is a process of moving air from outside to inside the body. The air moves from inside of our body to outside by exhalation. Both inhalation and exhalation together they form breathing. The breathing helps in exchange of gases in humans. So breathing is part of respiration in humans. What happens in respiration? In respiration process, oxygen is used and carbon dioxide is produced. So we breathe in oxygen rich air and we breathe out carbon dioxide rich air. That means we inhale oxygen rich air and we exhale carbon dioxide rich air. The process of breathing is similar in the animals like cows, buffaloes, dogs or cats with the process of the breathing in humans. So in humans, how we take oxygen inside and how we release out carbon dioxide outside. In the same way, in the animals like cows, buffaloes, dogs or cats also, same thing takes place. There are some animals like fishes, earthworm, insects, they have different mechanisms of exchange of gases or breathing. Earthworms, they breathe through their skin. How do they breathe through their skin? All those things when you come to higher classes will learn. Just remember, earthworms breathe through their skin. And fishes, they have special parts called gills. Fishes have gills. They help them to use dissolved oxygen from water. Exchange of gases in plants, it mainly takes place through the tiny pores in their leaves. The tiny pores in the leaves of the plants are called stomata. So exchange of gases, that is taking oxygen inside and leaving carbon dioxide outside by the plant body, it takes place through the tiny pores in the leaves, right. Leaves take in oxygen and release out carbon dioxide through their tiny pores during respiration process. And leaves take in carbon dioxide and release out oxygen through their tiny pores during photosynthesis. See, in the case of animals, exchange of gases means only taking in oxygen and releasing out carbon dioxide because exchange of gases takes place only for respiration in the case of animals. Whereas in the case of plants, exchange of gases takes place for two processes. One is respiration and another one is photosynthesis. In both these processes, exchange of gases is not same. In respiration, it is same like animals. That is, exchange of gases means taking in oxygen and releasing out carbon dioxide. Whereas in case of photosynthesis, exchange of gases means taking in carbon dioxide and releasing out oxygen through the tiny pores, right? So plants produce 
food by photosynthesis using carbon dioxide only during daytime whereas respiration it occurs both in daytime as well as in night time both day and night so the but what is the important point here is the amount of oxygen released in photosynthesis by plants it is much much more higher than the oxygen that the same plants use it for respiration means uh, they use respiration sorry they use oxygen in their respiration plants use oxygen in their respiration and they release oxygen in their photosynthesis okay whatever the oxygen that they are producing it is very high in quantity than the oxygen which they are using so only we are also getting oxygen animals also are getting oxygen because of the plants they produce excess oxygen than their requirement for their respiration so animals are also getting oxygen that point you have to remember next living things respond to stimuli what are stimuli stimuli is the plural for, plural form for stimulus the change in the surroundings that make the living organisms respond to them is called stimulus changes in the surroundings that make the living organisms respond to them are called stimuli plural form that's it when you watch a snake you will jump back so watching a snake suddenly coming the snake on your path that is a change in the path that change is causing you to jump back stepping on a hot object earlier you were stepping on normal area suddenly you have stepped on a hot object there is a change in your stepping area so you are jumping back enter into a dark area your eyes will just shrink in size so if you focus bright light on wild animals they will run away right cockroaches begin to move to their hiding places if the light is on if the light is on in the kitchen right because there is a change for them cockroaches they move in the dark but when there is a light that is on switched on then automatically there is a change in their surroundings so they run away do plants also exhibit stimuli to the sorry do plants also exhibit responses to the stimuli yes flowers of some plants they bloom only at night example jasmine okay etc and flowers of some plants they close after sunset okay so you can see many flowers they close after sunset in the case of a plant known as touch me not plant scientifically it is called mimosa in mimosa plant leaves they close or they fold upon being touched by your hand or by some other object if the leaves of the mimosa plant are touched they close so that is also a response by the plant towards the stimuli in most of the plants growth occurs in the direction of the sunlight so if you place a plant under the shaded area the plant will start growing by bending towards the sunlight that means most of the plants grow towards the direction of the sunlight okay next living organisms excrete what is this excretion excrete means to get rid of the wastes the process of getting rid of the wastes from the body of the living organisms is known as excretion in the bodies of living organisms many wastes are produced by the life processes these 
wastes have to be discarded out from the body otherwise they cause harm to the body so animals especially they have got special process called excretion by which they get rid of the wastes but it occurs even in plants also plants they do not use any specific process but they also make their wastes to go out from their body not like animals but they have got their own mechanism plants can store some of the waste materials some materials may be like like poisonous materials and other harmful materials have to be excreted out from the plants such materials are stored in the plant body within their parts by which plants do not get harm means these materials are stored in the plant parts by which these harmful materials are kept aside like we keep the things in store room okay plants also keep the such waste materials in the the store in certain other parts some plants remove some waste products as secretions like gums resins etc next next living organisms reproduce their own kind means same type of organisms are produced from the already existing organisms some animals produce their young ones through eggs and some animals give birth to the young ones directly to take hens the sorry birds like hens pigeons etc they lay the eggs and from the eggs by hatching process young ones are produced if you take the buffaloes cows okay human beings goats dogs etc they directly deliver the young ones like animals different plants also have different modes of reproduction some plants reproduce through the seeds and some plants reproduce through other parts not from seeds some plants reproduce through the stem cuttings let us take the examples the plants that reproduce through seeds maize wheat rice groundnut mango okay this tamarind neem so many plants are there plants that reproduce through other parts not from seeds through underground stem if you take potato through underground stem they reproduce through root if you take carrot through root they rep- they reproduce through leaf a special plant known as bryophyllum you might have heard of ranapala which is a medicinal plant scientifically it is known as bryophyllum through leaves it reproduces through stem cuttings if you take hibiscus rose pomegranate there are so many plants through stem cuttings they reproduce so what is reproduction production of one or more of their own kind by living organisms is known as reproduction living things move on their own no machine is required for them they move on their own right no engine is required built in engines already there life engine is already there in the living organism so they move animals can move from one place to another place and they also exhibit other body movements we can shake our hands we can rotate our hands and legs that is body movements we can move from one place to other place like like we other animals also do the same thing whereas plants are generally anchored to the soil anchored means fixed to the soil so they do not move from one place to another place plants do not move from one place to another place but food water minerals etc they move in the plant body from one part of the plant body to another part of the plant body and uh, you can observe other movements also in the plants flowers open open up that is carefully if we watch if you take time lapse photography we can watch how the flower opens like a movement you can see 
and closing also it can also be watched right so this is how plants also exhibit movements their growth also as it takes place slowly we cannot observe but actually if by using time lapse photography if we can record it we can see the growth also like a movement in the plant right okay living organisms die individual organisms they die we all know right whether it is plant or animal anything individually it will die all plants do not die at one time all animals do not die at one time all humans do not die at one time but individual human beings they die at their respective times okay due to various reasons but living organisms compulsorily they die as per bhagavad gita saying jata sashi druhon mrutyu means every born organism has to die there is no other go so it is also a characteristic of living organisms but types of organisms survive humans individually they die but is human race completely vanished no so individually human type that type of organism that is as human humans are alive as type of organism buffaloes are alive individually many buffaloes they may die but are buffaloes completely vanished no so type of organisms they survive thousands of years as they reproduce their own kind right so reproduction process allows the type of organisms to survive thousands of years even though individual organisms die even though individual organisms are dying once in every now and then but how the types of organisms are alive for thousands of years because the organisms they produce their own kind by the process of the production if you take the non living things like cars bicycle clocks and water in the rivers they also move but they do not have all other characteristics of living organisms many non living things like clouds train by adding the new bogies they also grow in their size but they do not have all other characters of living organisms or living things so we can conclude that living things may have all of the characteristics which we have discussed whereas non living things may not show all of the characteristics of living things which we have discussed okay the non living things may show one or two characteristics of the living things but to that to they are induced by humans they are added by humans only right there is one interesting thing seeds seeds do they move no do they produce seeds from seed do you get another seed directly no from seed can you see any urine is coming out no so seeds are in the state of living but they do not show growth if you take the seed and keep it aside okay does it grow no does it excrete no does it reproduce no for many of the characters we can get the answer no but still they are alive how can you say that the seeds are alive as long as the seeds are in living state they respire and generate heat if you take a sack of seeds and keep your hand inside that sack of seeds you can find little warmth or heat from that sack of seeds from where that heat is coming from the seeds by their respiration so even though other life processes are not active in the seeds respiration takes place even in seeds to keep them alive or living in state and by respiration energy is produced in the form of heat so because of this only 
the seeds are kept alive so what can we say about life what is life life is nothing but flow of energy being in little heart condition that is the reason we all might have heard whenever a person dies okay the body of the person it is felt as cool okay body has become cool like that people say means heat generation is stopped in that person after the death so the person is not alive okay so life is flow of energy as long as respiration is taking place the flow of energy will be on now let us discuss about the keywords all keywords are already discussed in the chapter itself anyhow once again like a simple definition i am giving here adaptation the body feature or habit that enables organisms to survive in a given habitat is known as adaptation aquatic habitat living surroundings in water river ocean etc biotic component living things of a habitat plants and animals are biotic component excretion process of getting rid of wastes from the body is known as excretion growth increase in the size of organisms is known as growth habitat living surroundings means the surroundings of the living organisms where the organisms live is known as habitat living a state of being alive okay reproduction the process of producing same kind of new organisms by already existing organisms is known as reproduction respiration the process of production of energy by using food and oxygen inside the living bodies is known as respiration so in this process exchange of gases takes place so exchange of gases is part of respiration so don't think that breathing is respiration like that breathing is only part of respiration it is the initial and end part of a respiration not the respiration respiration is production of energy by using food and oxygen inside the bodies of the living organism that is respiration in detail when you come to higher classes there you will learn stimulus a change in the surroundings that causes the living organisms to exhibit responses towards that change is known as stimulus with this keywords are completed let us take the exercises what is a habitat the surroundings of the living organisms where the organisms live is known as habitat how are cactus adapted to survive in a desert cactus has modified leaves in the form of spines the stem is modified in the form of leaf to carry out respiration sorry photosynthesis stem is modified in the form of leaf to carry out photosynthesis stem is covered with a thick waxy layer to reduce the water loss the roots are just present very deep in the soil they go the roots of the plant go very deep in the soil to get the water this is how cactus is adapted to survive in a desert fill up the blanks the presence of specific features which enable a plant or an animal to live in a particular habitat is called adaptation b the habitats of the plants and animals that live on land are called terrestrial habitats c the habitats of plants and animals that live in water are called aquatic habitat soil water and air are the abiotic factors of a habitat next changes in our surroundings that make us respond to them are called stimuli 
which of the things in the following list are non living plow mushroom sewing machine radio boat water hyacinth earthworm see mushroom is living thing water hyacinth it is a plant that is living thing earthworm is living thing non living are the non living things are plow sewing machine radio boat living things are mushroom water hyacinth and earthworm next give an example of a non living thing which shows any two characteristics of living things okay take clouds clouds they grow in size they move also take train it moves when bogies are added new compartments are added to it it grow in size right okay they asked one example i gave two examples next which of the non living things listed below were once part of a living thing butter leather soil wool electric bulb cooking oil salt apple rubber if you take butter it was present in the milk milk was present in the buffalo or cow right it is part of a living thing once now it is non living thing leather from the skin of the animals we get the leather so earlier it was part of the living thing wool it was the fur of the animals like sheep so once it was part of the living thing cooking oil it was available from the seeds so seeds are part of the living things once so cooking oil apple fruit when it was present on the plant it was part of the living thing right so rubber rubber artificial rubber is there natural rubber also is there from latex special plants are there called hevea brasiliensis from the plant rubber is available so rubber also if it is natural rubber not synthetic rubber it is once part of the living thing so part of the living things once they are part of the living things but now they are non living things what are they butter leather wool cooking oil apple and rubber list the common characteristics of the living things already we have discussed okay you can write directly from the explanation explain why speed is important for survival in the grasslands for animals that live there there are few trees or places for animals to hide in grassland habitats so they cannot hide the prey animals they cannot hide because only very less number of trees are there so when predator starts chasing them if they have to escape from the predator they need to have good speed otherwise they will get caught very easily by the predator so only speed is very important for the survival of the organisms in the grasslands right especially for survival of prey animals in the grasslands